So, so um, I think we can, yeah, we, we, we go to the collaborative document here. We have the icebreaker questions. So um, you have here the two questions here. Uh, what types of projects can you use, use uh, Git for? And what cool things have we discovered along the past days? So please, um, um, please um, contribute with, 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 um, with, with your um, points to these questions. And, and in, in the meanwhile, uh, Danny and I, we could perhaps, so, so Danny, how, how are you using Git for, for, for your projects? Uh, I am mainly using Git Collaborative. Uh, with, uh, I have the right access to a project uh, where we work together with the team. Mostly I'm using the centralized working uh, workflow. Oh, is it the same with you? Yes, it's similar that I also use mainly a centralized workflow and, and uh, what is a centralized workflow and, and what is then a so-called distributed workflow or, or topics that we will come to in this lesson today. Yeah, and I just want to mention that please ask questions on the uh, collaborative document and we will try to uh, make everything clear and please ask, uh, don't suffer silence, uh, silently. And uh, probably we could uh, mention the basic Git commands we will use that we, we all learned the last two days. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I. I myself use a rather small set of commands yeah. in, in my daily work. So that would be, I mean, first of all, git init, mm -hmm. and then uh, git checkout and creating directly a, a new uh, branch. Uh, and uh, yeah, git add and, and git commit. Yeah. That, that's most of the time what I do. And um, uh, rather often, um, almost all the time, um, but by keeping my local branches up to date, mm -hmm. I can then, it's rather seldom that I come into uh, uh, conflicts where I, uh, where I need to myself uh, re resolve uh, conflicts in, in the material. Okay. Yeah, so that uh, first day we learned the basics about Git come uh, add staging the uh, um, changes and git commit, then mm. we, we learn branching and merging and conflict uh, resolution uh, re and sharing rep repositories online as an individual. Uh, not uh, We were sh actually not sharing and collaborating last two days, but you all learn how to create a repository on the web interface GitHub. And also yesterday we talked a lot about inspecting history, right? So, which are the basic commands you would use uh, for your Git uh, everyday life? Yeah, so, so, so that would be uh, those mentions. So, I mean, Git commit, uh, Git branch, although I almost always use uh, Git checkout and then the minus B flag to directly then name a new branch. Mm -hmm. I and started. That, uh, I started to use uh, git switch uh, uh, dash dash create uh, instead of checkout nowadays. So yeah. I... Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you're, you're right. Um, I have these old old uh, namings. Yeah. Uh, I used to use that, but uh, now I I think the switch makes more sense. So I use uh, git uh, switch uh, dash dash create uh, and the branch from main, the default branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so on, on, on that um, on that notion, I could also um, mention that if there are a few various combinations that one is using commonly, then, then one can, uh, I mean, bit git switch or, or git check or with some flags, mm -hmm. then um, it can be a convenient to create aliases so that one can execute these commands with very few keystrokes. So um, yeah, perhaps we can have a look on, on what's come up on the HackMD here. Yeah. So regarding which types of project can you use Git for? And um, yes, starting from the top here, yes, working on a code where we have different extensions involved. We can share the work into smaller teams and then make sure everything comes nicely together. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> 
uh, th th this indeed is is a very important use case for for uh, for, for git um, one can then have it in different setups uh, with teams and, and sub teams and so forth. Uh, what more have we have here? Small link, uh, storing small amounts of pictures. Yes, that, that, that's very nice. Code drafting proposal, uh, backups. That, that's highly relevant. Uh, I mean, with Git, with the different Git commands, uh, with, with uh, push and clone and pull and so on. One can uh, rather straightforwardly synchronize content between different namespaces and between different computers. Yeah, and I like this uh, to sync my course between different computers and clusters. I do it a lot uh, with Git. It's very easy to. Mm -hmm. Thing have we discovered um, or learned the past days? And uh, yeah, this one can diff changes directly on on the web. Uh, that's certainly a, a rather nice uh, feature. Mm -hmm. That can be very useful also if you have if you're working in a context where you might have, let's say, some of the collaborators are working uh, are, are working in the terminal, and then you might have others that are perhaps um, they are mainly reviewing or, or perhaps are not having their, their hands in the code or whatever other content it is, but, but they would like to review and, and then to be able to share with them, um, including also doing operations such as uh, diff on the web is um, convenient because I mean, then you only need to invite them or, or ensure that they have access to the repository and point them to the correct uh, URL. Yeah, and then I can create branches where I can try what things and then merge. And this is the coolest thing for me, at least uh, without uh, um, being scared to make any changes on someone's code, I could try out myself. So I like the branching and uh, developing something. Yeah. Yeah, there are more answers coming. Is there any question we should take it uh, from the last day or anyone have any question from the last day we can discuss here as well? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I'm checking here on the, just one second on the, Or zoom. No, okay. I, I think we could we we, we could sl slowly um, get going with the the, the first ep episode of today. Yeah. So I'll switch over to that tab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yes, so so the lesson uh, for today is collaborative uh, distributed version control. So what, what this is about. So we have learned how to make a Git repository for a single person. And, and how can we then deal with sharing? So, um, I mean, traditional old fashioned ways of, of uh, sharing files would be that you, you just manually uh, distribute the files in, in hard copy by as an email attachment, or, or you, uh, I mean, even earlier that, that you would provide it in, in on, um, or, or could be on a USB drive or, or, or the like. Um, however, if you want to have the, the fine grained and well controlled um, means to, to share content, then Git and all infrastructure as is available with, with online services such as GitHub, GitLab, and Diffbucket provides a very good infrastructure to do that. So to highlight a few things here, which we have in the lesson materials. So yeah, to share a folder using email uh, or, or a file train service, uh, you will then have a lot of, of communication back and forth and you easily end up in a situation where you have many copies not being synchronized. 
and also the one person repositories on the web you uh, of course you get the uh, backup then you keep track of more projects on the github and you you get to learn a lot of things when you are on the github and follow some other project and you gain visibility and feedback and recognition in your field that's a good thing to have right and it is part of networking as well if you go and uh, collaborate or contribute to some public uh, projects, you, you will gain the um, needed recognition and uh, you will get more networking and also I would uh, consider in that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, a good point. So if you are working in, in, in the smaller team, uh, perhaps uh, with, with your own local colleagues or, or be it in a well-defined smaller team with, with collaborators also elsewhere then uh, to work with one common repository can, can be a convenient thing and i think that's a setup which is rather common for for many of us already yeah. i am and myself so in, at code refinery we are doing that mostly yeah yeah uh, that, that's a good point uh, Although it's not completely closed shop, because also in principle, because all, all as the code refinery repositories are public on the web, it's also so that you can add, you can add on um, um, connection to other repositories by means of, of forking. Yeah. So I mean, certainly the 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 main workflow is that we use a common repository. But one can add on also this this so-called forking workflow to it on top. So yeah, so so coming to this with with forking, um, that's a setup where, where you have multiple repositories which have um, different owners, and with the owner here it meant that then um, I mean could well could be on GitHub GitLab that you have. The person who has to, to say the, own that specific repo on on in that namespace, um, but it can also then if you have the the Git repositories on, on different servers, can also be to say who are the owners of, of that that hardware who have physical control to the servers. Mm -hmm. So the centralized uh, a common repository for a small group is that uh, all these group members will have read and write access, and they will work parallel to a common goal. That's what you try to say about the common repository for a group, which is not public. Yeah, so for, for the smaller group, it is common that you have that all members have read and write access to, to um, the repositories, and not necessarily to all the branches, because it could, can be that you would need to have uh, some implementation of, of uh, let's say quality control or, or reviewing mm -hmm. that uh, you have some branches, typically let's say the main branch, uh, write protectives that only a few persons can um, can work and, and write directly to it. Yeah. Um, and, and this can also then be set up and we will, we will uh, touch upon that during the lesson today that it can be set up so that um, you you need to have in order to write then each of the members of, of a repository will need to have an approval of of the pool request so that they always have this peer reviewing yeah we will touch it upon after the, before the lunch itself yeah yeah so that uh, being able to share more easily, easier to change something. So GitHub, uh, Git uh, provide that kind of, uh, this is uh, a proper tool to do that. Uh, easier to change something and only one person don't need to be the sole owner of everything. Everyone can contribute and you can get the feedback as well. Yes, yes. So what are we going to do today that we are going to collaborate uh, a centralized workflow before the lunch and then we will go to forking and we'll see how to 
uh, we will discuss how to collaborate uh, in after this course if you want to and uh, the be best practices to collaborate that's the plan yes that's plan. and we so, will have two uh, exercises today one before lunch and one after yes exactly. so for today's uh, lesson the prerequisite is basic understanding of gate so i assume that all have this uh, basic understanding from uh, last two days uh, uh, that you enjoy the course and you know about the basic understanding and mostly we will use git add to stage the changes git commit and then git push and pull these things uh, on the command line today we may not be using a lot of uh, history inspection and all these tools uh, um, we are not going to do use it today, but we will just how to make a come uh, change and how to uh, make a change proposal that is pull request and how to collaborate it. Is there anything else to add? Uh, yeah, can I mention that we will um, we we will uh, work with the centralized workflow and then mm -hmm. after lunch with the distributed workflow and we will do it here on GitHub. And we will use a little bit of the nomenclature of GitHub in their API. Mm -hmm. However, um, it's important to, to, to note that there are also other services, such as GitLab and Bitbucket, that's, that provide a similar infrastructure. And uh, if one gets up and started on one infrastructure, uh, and here today, currently, it's then that we continue to work with GitHub, uh, then one is in a good position then to be able to, to, to get up and started on one of the other services. So uh, you need to have a GitHub account uh, for uh, doing the exercise today. And if you are an individual learner, please uh, follow the instructions and by email uh, on Tuesday by that way. Um, yeah. Yes, so I think we can move here to the next panel of the lesson, okay. bringing up here various concepts around collaboration. So I think, okay, the mot motivation for why you will need to collaborate uh, with, with contents of various kind uh, by means of Git, we have already um, um, touched upon that. Um, so yeah, we can highlight a few of the things that we will touch upon in the lesson. So let's say the scenario is someone has given you access to a repository and you would like to contribute, then how to do that in practice. So we will learn how to make a copy and then send changes back. Once we have uh, uh, made them some changes and then committed them, we will make a so-called pull request that then will allow for a review of new content. And uh, this, ha having um, learned how to do this, we will be able then to propose um, changes to, to uh, repositories, but both the ones that we are, so to say, members of ourselves and ones which are more external that are public okay. repositories. So I now scroll down to the listing here of various uh, central concepts here. So repository, yeah, that that's uh, the product. I mean, the, the, the whole, I mean, the contents of your of your source code or your text code that is contained in a working directory on which you have made a git commit, so that you get the material. Uh, put into the dot .git directory. The commit, yeah, that's a snapshot of a of, of the product uh, which we're doing with, with git um, with git commit command, and each commit gets an, an a unique identifier, which is having these long hashtag lines. Um, branches. Or independent development lines. Uh, main development line is often called main, and uh, 
please keep in mind here that it's main is nowadays what is uh, the, the the most commonly used default name of the base branch. Um, however, there, it's also many repositories around where the name master is used for for the main or base development line. Mm -hmm. so, so you will often encounter either of the two. So Daniel, what, what is a tag? Um, uh, has well, that to do with commits? Uh, yeah, it is pointed to one commit. Uh, then I think Radovan was mentioning about uh, the sticky notes and I would uh, consider it as a say, permanent sticky notes or uh, not sticky notes, like stone engraved things, something. If if you want to publish some your code, some of your code in specific version, you can tag it there. Is it that you use tag for? Or... Yes, that, that, yeah, that's a, it's a good use case. And uh, so the tags can be sticky note likeish with uh, whatever um, label, which is good for memory. It could also be that you are tagging it with, with regular version numbers. Uh, we can also then be, be helpful because that, that, that helps you then to traverse the Git history and, and uh, looking then uh, not not for the, for the Git commit hashes, which are, so to say, not human readable, but to look with something that, that, that gives a little bit an indication on where the project is standing uh, at a given commit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the cloning. Um... We were uh, discussing a little bit on uh, yesterday uh, from GitHub. Uh, what is clo uh, cloning is just copying the whole repository. And it, uh, something I do always, like I copy and uh, clone on one on my laptop or one on my other uh, computer as well. That's easy uh, copying. Uh, or do you have any other meaning for cloning? Um, no, I, I would. Well, like say that you're instant instantiating a complete, yeah, a complete copy of uh, the base repository, which you could call also a parent repository. Uh, and it's a very convenient way of, of then propagating the full set of information contained in on, on one computer on, on one disk system, and then to bring it all over to another disk system. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, where do you use the cloning actually? Because if, if we are working on uh, the uh, code refinery kind of projects uh, and I we both have access, that is where you mostly use Git cloning. If I don't have any um, access to any public uh, repository, then what I should uh, use uh, if I want to contribute or I want to see what is going on or I want to develop something from them. It's, is it the forking? Uh, the... Yes, that's yeah, that that's right. That sounds like forking. Um, uh, could you ask uh, just a few words more about cloning here? So, mm -hmm. so, so indeed, I mean, you can uh, cloning. You you can do it uh, in mul I mean, multiple copies, so to say. And and uh, a common case is that that you you put up copies of a repository on on multiple computers or on if it is on, on the same computer it can be under different namespaces different parts of the file system mm -hmm. uh, and i think one rather common thing is that you are intending to use a code and uh, you use git clone as a simple way to to obtain the code and, and for then installing it and uh, that can be so to say completely uh, one-sided in, in the sense that you will only use git clone and git pool to then i mean every now and then um, obtain new versions of the program okay uh, a real life uh, scenario is, is if i want to follow the numbai or uh, some kind of public repository and but i i just want to have it on my computer and work on it yeah or, yeah that's, uh, but I don't have any uh, read and write access on that public uh, repository, but I want to clone it on my personal computer. Then I will clone it, git clone, I can use it. And also if I uh, I have a read and write access to code refinery, 
uh, repository and I want to contribute there, I can clone it and work on it and propose the changes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Then... So, um, just to highlight here what you can see on this figure here. So, in this cloud, there is the whole of, of, of the GitHub uh, infrastructure. And you see here that they have a parent repository here. And this arrow here is a clone which you're then making to a local computer. Mm -hmm. uh, but clones can certainly also be, be done between different computers which are just to say regular server or, or laptops it must not be then involving any uh, and any um, service such as github or or gitlab yeah i see that in the figure there is an origin uh, slash main and origin slash experiment but that that's exactly the origin mean yeah there to um, yes how should I describe that as accurately as possible so I mean it, it, it's a pointer to uh, I mean you have the two instances of, of the repo you have one on the main on the parent repository and one that you're or then on on the other computer in this case your laptop and uh, Disappointed them to uh, um, to the commits which are local here on, on this computer and 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 to the instance of, of the repository on that computer. Uh, was perhaps a little bit wait, but but, but uh, we could someone can perhaps fill in on that on on uh, the HackMD direct comment. Um, forking repository. So that's a special thing which is implemented on, for instance, on GitHub. So when you're forking, you make a complete copy of all or of selected branches. And then this copy is, is still living on GitHub. Yeah. So it is all the uh, command for the web interface, not for your um, command line on your local computer. Yes, indeed. Uh, the forking is something that you do in the web interface, and uh, to my knowledge, there's no really direct corresponding thing um, that you can do, so to say, on, on the command line. So if I fork a public uh, repository, then I fork it on my namespace, and uh, it is on the GitHub, on my namespace, under my namespace, the forked repository. It is just like um, I clone on my local uh, computer, I fork on my github account is it can i say it like that uh, yeah so i mean the the, the you, you mentioned this with your own namespace so, so when you do the fork then typically you would have that the name of the fork will have the same uh, name as i mean as it had in a parent repository but mm -hmm it will be then living under your namespace on, on uh, GitHub. Mm -hmm. And there you then by default have write access because you are the owner of that repository on, uh, on under your namespace on GitHub. So a public uh, repository which has uh, several folks will have several copies on the web interface, but with, under different namespace. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a good summary, yes. Um, the two related things here, which are templating and importing. So, templating is something that we actually make use of during this uh, lesson. And uh, <clears throat> templating is that you start from scratch. So, if you take um, you take the current stand of a repository, and you propagate all of that into a new repository and make an initial commit so that you then start off from scratch without having any history. And uh, that can be very good if you have some, uh, I mean, a, a good example is for instance, if you have, if you're working with some um, 
some, some documents that have a certain layout and, and you have so to say a, a document template then you can clone you, you, you can generate from template the base layout for your product and as that individual product starts from scratch it's then natural to start with with the with initial commit and, and starting the history from from the beginning so that, that's one good use case for so for, yeah, when i want to have a specific structure i can go for a template yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, then importing uh, we will not go into technical details here but but that, that is uh, there are means to to to, to transfer the whole of the repository to another infrastructure. And one important aspect, so that you will then get, I mean, the whole repository. And, and, and then um, related to this, something which is rather important, uh, and I leave that as an open-ended uh, question, or, or, or I think, um, namely this is whether, what can you then bring along when you do the importing? Mm -hmm. Because that can, for instance, be all of the system um, with let's say issues and pull requests and so forth might have really long discussions there and we might have hundreds or thousands of users who are used to reporting issues and working with pull requests in one repository so importing or migrating from one service to another will also need to involve that you have that transition being uh, as smooth as possible have you used, uh, were you using uh, importing a lot or? Um, no, I've never used it, um, but I've had it up for discussion in the context that typically uh, it's important that you um, that you um, that you avoid situations where, where, where you lock in your product into some given infrastructure, so to say. Okay, but I think we can now perhaps uh, move over to talk about um, centralized workflow specifically. Probably we could uh, talk a little bit of, uh, we have a time, we could a little bit talk about the synchronizing changes between repositories, about pull and push. Oh, yes. Well. summary um, figure here we have both um, the parent repository we have a fork that lives on, on github and then we have a clone which is residing elsewhere and uh, it's very important that, that I mean here there are arrows in this direction and in this direction but as we will see later on it's important that you can also then of course uh, propagate back in the other directions, new content and, uh, and new commits. And uh, the operations that we'll use for this is git pull and git fetch. And in the other direction, we will use git push. So git pull means downloading or? Uh, yes, indeed. And pull means uploading. Yes. Or Okay, so when I want to change something, I clone it and pull all the uh, latest update, then make changes and push it. And then my workflow should be I make a change proposal, whatever change I made. That's called pull request, right? Yes, on GitHub is called pull request. Um, on GitLab, then merge request. Okay, yeah. So pull request means a change proposal. And uh, I think I like a bit a bit more merge request that make a bit more sense to me that, uh, um, that rather than pull request, GitLab uses merge request instead of pull request. Oh, are you using GitLab mostly or GitHub? GitHub mainly, but that but varies okay. over time, I would say. So, yes. So, so then one more question regarding mm. the synchronizing. So we, if we clone and if we fork some repository uh, and the main 
uh, uh, reposted if there are any changes happened after we cloned. Uh, do they automatically synchronize themselves or we need to do something? Uh, that that depends. Uh, I mainly use manual synchronization, but, but you could also set up so that you have automatic synchronization. Okay, yeah, but we will try to do that today. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on to centralized workflow. And mm -hmm. if you then grab yeah, the screen share. Yeah, just, just can we uh, go to the Hatch uh, collaborative document and see if there is one any questions? I think it's um yeah it's all answered i think it's better we, we we move ahead right now we can get back to the questions uh, after the exercise yeah i will try to share my screen then so does it look good yeah, looks good. So, uh, yeah, we are going to uh, do one of the um, collaboration uh, collaboration uh, now. Uh, we talked about um, cloning and Git clone and Git uh, fork, and uh, one thing we are going to do is a centralized workflow. And we'll uh, go through that, how does it work? And we will prepare for the ex um, exercise and we'll back up from the exercise and we'll have a demo and discuss this, that's the plan. So in this uh, session, we are exploring the usage of centralized workflow for collaborating online project within one repository in GitHub. So uh, the example of uh, central repository uh, is that we have a small group or um, research group or the group like a code refinery, we have a central repository and everyone work parallel and everyone contribute to uh, the central workshop, uh, central repository. This means all the uh, contributors have access to the central repository. And uh, if I hope everyone uh, go through the instruction uh, Radovan mentioned and uh, that uh, during the exercise, if you want to, if a, if you're an in individual learner, you, you need to uh, send an access request to participate in the exercise. Uh, so this is the centralized layout uh, where um, this is the central repository and uh, Blue is where all the contributors work on their computer. So do you have any ex uh, example about the central uh, repository and workflow or is it that something you do every day, Johan? Yeah, I have it. For instance, for, for the, the documentation that we have for our supercomputer uh, in mm -hmm. Stockholm and also for the, the program uh, catalog where we have documentation of specific application programs then we are working towards a central repository. Yeah. Uh, and, and that I would say, because that sort of uh, internal material uh, shared among only a, a small group of colleagues. Um, so then a centralized layout is uh, the natural setup. Yeah, we had the same uh, situation at uh, Andres. Uh, but our colleagues are uh, spread among uh, different universities in Norway. Uh, so we have the central repository and we all from different uh, part will contribute to the central repository uh, like the documentation for the uh, in, uh, HPC documentation or, or storage services and all. So the main uh, point is when you contribute to the centralized workflow, all uh, developers or, or contributors will have read and write permission. You can uh, copy and contribute to, to uh, back to the central repository. Um, so, and good idea to write protect the main branch. What uh, what does it mean to write protected domain uh, or the default branch, uh, Johan? How do you 
define that. That, um, that could be if you start, that you Re require that you have a code review on new content so that, well, code first and foremost must be contributed in, in a feature branch and you make then a pull request and you would need to have that content reviewed. And uh, this can be in particular important in some situations. So let's say that the thing that you commit, when, when it ends up on, let's say, the, most, the main branch, could be that it then goes directly live in some regard. So it could be, if it's a program code, could be that that code is directly being used for something, uh, which could be, so to say, um, some, some, some ongoing service which then might malfunction if the most recent commit is not working. Yeah. So, so, so then so, so having some extra checks there are, are particularly important uh, because it might be that you, uh, it's not at all good if uh, malfunctioning content is, is put to, to main. Uh, so in this uh, centralized workflow, when we contribute, uh, what is exactly uh, uh, the workflow you follow? Like uh, you clone it and uh, uh, commit and push it and make a pull request to changes to suggest a uh, change proposal and someone else of one of the colleagues uh, will review it and approve it and merge it to the main branch. That's the usual workflow you uh, we follow <coughs> here at Andres and the university and I suppose that's the same workflow at yours. Uh, yes, essentially, yes. Uh, sometimes it, it can be a conversation so that, let's say, one a collaborator is coming with some comments, um, let's say approving on his or her part, and then then it, it, you still await also the feedback from other colleagues before you go ahead to, to actually merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then there is, uh, it's a good thing in that uh, there is one more uh, person or um, to go through it and uh, see the what is going on and uh, you don't um, you have an extra hand to make sure that everything is on place <laughs> so i just want to check uh, when is our break time it is it is now or yeah so, so we i see um, you're coming here to the next heading here is exercise preparation and i think here that um, we could do like this that uh, we, we take the exercise preparation uh, right after the break mm -hmm. um, and we are then now currently on time mm -hmm. so are there something that we would like to conclude with before the break or uh, mm, not really just that uh, we will try out and we will prepare after breakfast we will prepare for the exercise and everyone will have 30 minutes to go uh, do the exercise but come back here we will explain what uh, are we what is the goal of this ex exercise and what we what the outcome we expect from uh, this exercise okay that sounds so, good so we, we can put the, the direct link to, to, to that header exercise preparation in the hack md mm -hmm. and then go for a 10 minute long break. Yeah. We'll be back at 9.56. Uh, uh, yes, 56. Yeah. yeah. I have different time zones. So. Yeah. Good. Okay. See you. See you in a bit.
Are you back? Yes, you are there. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, welcome back. Um, so we are preparing for the exercise. In this exercise, we will practice collaborative centralized workflow. Uh, in groups, uh, I see, I know that there are people uh, joining as a team as well as individuals. So we will prepare the workshop for uh, workflow for uh, teams first. So if you are part of a team or uh, an exercise room in Zoom or in person, and then this is uh, the first one, two minutes. I will discuss how you are going to collaborate on this exercise. And if you're following uh, as, as you're on, uh, please lay back and I will come back to it. This is for the team or uh, in exercise room or in person. So if uh, you are in team, uh, bigger team like 20 people, then I would suggest uh, divide into two, uh, two groups or something. So each group needs to appoint someone who will host the GitHub repository as a maintainer. The maintainer will create an exercise repository and all the others uh, will give their user a GitHub username and the maintainer will add to the GitHub repository. Uh, then uh, they will collaborate. That's what how they do. So the one person in the exercise room, is a, if it's a team lead or anyone else, you first go to generate a new repository from the template that we discussed, that this is the template and you, you will have the same structure. So here, go, uh, go to the template and use this template and create a new repository. Mm, and it, it should be under your namespace. Uh, centralized. Workflow. September 23, I, I, and you can uh, provide some description on, and if you want, and then create a repository that will be under your repository, uh, under your namespace. So uh, then you can uh, add collaborators going to the settings. Uh, and uh, each collaborator should provide uh, your usernames um, uh, to the maintainer or the, uh, the as the team leader who create this uh, centralized workflow exercise. Um, then one important thing is to unwash uh, because uh, if, if you have all activities, uh, um, you, if you're watching, you might get a uh, notification on your email. So this is, uh, mm, if you click here, partic uh, only participating and mention. So whenever you are, uh, you, your name is mentioned or you are in activity, then you will uh, get um, notification. So that's a way of uh, uh, less spamming uh, emails. So and this is something which can be, be uh, adjusted at any time, so to say. So yeah, yeah. If if you are uh, really uh, doing something after this uh, this workshop and some uh, repository, you want to know all the activities uh, happening. If you are collaborating with only one, two or three people, uh, <clears throat> you would like to uh, know the activities. Then you can put it unwatch. For the time being, you can do it. Uh, Unwash. So, and then you are expected to follow the uh, steps here. Uh, creating uh, all the contributors uh, clone from the, uh, the uh, repository. You are uh, you are part of a, as a contributor, and then follow the steps as described below. So this is. Uh, the next part is uh, for all those who follow us as on their own and where we will create a repository we already created and uh, you uh, were asked to um, send a access request to us and I suppose most of many of you already sent and then we will have two repository, one recorded and non-recorded. 
and recorder will be shown on stream and it will be recorded and it will be uh, on the YouTube as well. As, so if you don't want your username and uh, uh, to be publicly shown, uh, you can opt for non-recorded. We will be showing recorded only. So uh, if you all already send access request, um, probably our um, team might help uh, give you uh, access and you don't forget to accept uh, the invitation. So then you will be part of this uh, repository. So you can, if you are already part of the repository, you can um, change, uh, unwatch, and so you can watch and unwatch. So participating and mention in your username. So this is the repository we will be using during uh, the exercise. Uh, is that, did I men, uh, forget to mention anything, Johan? What we are expecting to from them? Um, no, I think you, you uh, you touch upon everything. Uh, yeah. Just to emphasize uh, one thing that if you are working with uh, in, in a in, in a team, mm -hmm. then uh, it's important that, that you are then cloning from the, the right uh, URL from the right repository, namely the one which is shared by your maintainer of your repository. Yeah, and I can also mention that we, we can follow or create a cooking book, just like we did the Gugamola recipe last two days. So you can uh, create some recipes and clone the uh, uh, repository and um, go to a, a, create a branch and uh, commit your uh, recipe and push it to the uh, repository on GitHub and make a pull request. You have all these instructions below. You can follow it and. Yeah, it's mm. subdivided into steps uh, yeah. A to H. Yeah, A to H. Then we will uh, come back to the main, uh, main, come back to the studio and we will review the pull request and we will see how we can synchronize and we can take this little bit of discussion further as well. So, uh, yeah. Do your um, creative cooking recipe. We will see it. Yes, that sounds good. So then I think we are. 30 minutes for the exercise. Maybe be back at the 30, uh, hour past 35. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and please post the uh, questions in the HackMD as usual. And in the you will also find the direct links to the exercise preparation and then to the start of the exercise itself. Good, so um, happy exercising and see you in 30 minutes. Yeah. Hi, welcome back. So uh, I suppose everyone go through this uh, exercise, step A to H. We will have a demo here. Um, I will clone the repository a recorded one, which we, we will show here. So I will clone. Uh, there are different type of HTTPS and as such. Uh, which one you should suggest uh, me to clone, Johan? Yeah, I suggest you go for the SSH. We can, because then the authentication. Uh, yeah with GitHub work so that you can, will be able to push. Yeah, so. So I'm cloning. Uh, if you have set up the passphrase, you will, uh, you will be asked. So I have this password that's uh, set up. So I don't need to type the password, a passphrase. So then what are we supposed to do? Uh, I'm going to create some uh, cooking recipe. Uh, just I need to see if I get that this uh, tab. You need to go oh, yeah, to oh, the of repository. <laughs> of 
focus. Uh, yeah, so I I create a branch. It's uh, it switch. Uh, there that you have you, you put your username or or name yeah. in in the feature bronze name mm -hmm. it, it is uh, my name i just uh, for identification if there is more tanya and the recipe that would be here issue but yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the timing and i want to create um, a branch now i create the branch the tanya recipe and switch to the branch so i want to uh Okay, yeah, I'm using a Vim editor. I'm not very comfortable with Nano. Uh, so I have a tea recipe. I will. Uh, I would like to make a tea. Mm. So t.txt and um, how to make a good tea. Yeah, so. Boil water. Yeah. Water and... Uh, Pour it in a cup. Uh, place, uh, put, uh, put a tea bag that and stir. Like, yeah, that sounds excellent. Yeah, so this is going to be a good uh, tea uh, recipe. And if you have come. If someone else have comment uh, about this, they they can. Uh, there is a possibility to do when I uh, uh, propose the change. So, um, yeah, there is the question about milk in first or tea in first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have, and uh, now I created a file, but I didn't state it. Um, so should I type git status and see I have a new file dot staged and I would uh, like to commit. Uh, I think it's my it's a good change, but we'll see. And okay, so I have come committed my change here and the recipe added to it. Yes. And uh, then yes. I want to uh, push these changes to um, the repository on, on GitHub. Well, what should I do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can. Um, you need to specify to which origin bronze that you will push. Mm -hmm. And you can use the suggested code snippet there, git push origin minus u. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then done, yeah, receive. Mm. So what does this origin exactly do? It's, it's a placeholder it's, uh, in the web? Or it, it is a reference it's that a pointer. it's a pointer to, so that you that you're working towards the repository on on on, on uh, which is hosted on GitHub. Yeah. So and uh, the uh, dash u what uh, what is supposed to mm. uh, that that's the flag that will will, will target that uh, that 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 branch. Okay. So I can go without this, right? Hmm? I can go without uh, dash you. Uh, no, I think you need it, but but uh, I think you can try try now to yeah. execute. Mm -hmm. so, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. One comment here. So if you just uh, now you typed it with minus you, um, yeah, at the beginning. How do you just type the git push? Mm -hmm. Then git would have suggested. Uh, the one command to write in order to push to this uh, branch on yeah. on origin. Yeah. So I I have a uh, so 
there, Git gave me some uh, advice here, uh, how to do that and Git is push, it push my branch and Git is saying create a pull request uh, visiting this link. So if you want, you can uh, paste this link on your web browser or you go to the uh, GitHub directory and uh, you see here, uh, if I have my branch, yeah, that's uh, usually I do, or yes. And there is a compare and pull request, so I want to compare and pull request, see the city added, yeah. Uh, normal black tea recipe. If I want to, uh, in, in real life, uh, real world, if I want to give more description to my commit, I would like to do that here in the uh, de description. Is that the way you'd work, Arifa? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's good to, to keep keep the comments here uh, rather short. Yeah. In this. So I create a pull request. Git is checking uh, things, but uh, we could see if there are more pull requests and if uh, everybody who works on this uh, recorded version of centralized workflow exercise might have, oh yeah, I see seven pull requests. So uh, I mine is there, but uh, I, I should not, uh, means what is the best way? I, uh, do you suggest that I review my pull request or someone else? Ideally, it should be someone else because yeah. that, that's when you have the actual review with a second pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's some, and, and as I said earlier, one can also set it up so that it would not be possible for you to merge mm -hmm. uh, yourself. Yeah. Here it is set up so that we could do it, but, but it's still then a good thing to, to keep it to, 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 to the the proper review protocol but let, let's start from from, from the uh, that's right yeah, yeah, yeah i can one. i can try and see but uh, thank you for this uh recipe for nine leg -like and i added a recipe for nine leg -like there are common oh let's be included ingredients methods and tips oh thank you we'll check uh what is changed in the file chain oh this is a great oh, recipe it's, it's great. yeah i should uh, take it home <laughs> Yeah, that uh, looks uh, good, and uh, I think I I like it, and I would like to merge it. What should uh, the next steps? Uh, you can push the review changes button to the right, the green button, yeah. and uh, yeah, uh, here one can so either uh, only comment, uh, mm -hmm. one can approve and provide a comment. Mm -hmm. Or one could uh, specify specifically that you would like to request changes. But in this case, it's simple. So uh, you can click approve. Yeah. And then write like, just give a thumbs up there and leave a comment. Yeah. Mm, like, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then you submit the review. There is one thing here. Um, <clears throat> but normally, here in case approval not required, most mm. of the uh, centralized workflow, uh, where we work at the institution, some, we need the approval from someone. So that's the way it's set up. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, but yeah. Here, I like this uh, recipe, and I am going to try it, and I would like to have it on this repo. So I'm going to merge the pull request and thank you for submitting the request. Mm -hmm. Confirm merge. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, and now if you scroll down again, uh, it will ask here again, it states pull request successfully merged and closed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is it's saying that you can then delete the branch. Yeah. Uh, and here, I think this is the, 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 the workflow that, that we are or, or going with within this workshop here yeah, that you make the you work in the feature branches making the small contributions and and then you upstream it yeah. with the pull request uh, and, and and then you can delete it yeah 
but I would like to point out here that in some projects you let the feature branches live on for some longer time so that you you will um, on more than one occasion you will make a pull request from one feature branch to the main branch. In this case, we are going to delete it. Yeah, in this case, it's fine to delete it, yes. So there is an option to restore the branch also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to the code and see, yes, we see the recipe here. Great. That's great. And there are more pull requests. Uh, which, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll leave a review my uh, pull request and probably we can come back to it a bit uh, um, in the I think if, if we keep uh, for simplicity, if we keep your screen share and, and and we can take another one from yeah we can we can take it from, from the bottom uh, in in chronological yeah. maybe I could uh, see this uh, new recipe I just yeah okay so there are two commits and there are uh, one file change mm -hmm. okay this is tabular ingredients so mm -hmm. I don't know about the dish but thank you so much and uh, we will. I think this is also good, uh, nice to have. So, there's a question in the notes: Should people be reviewing now? Like, what should different people be doing? That's a good question. Uh, how do you suggest? Uh, and I think we, it, our our code refinery people can review this. Or would you suggest people review this? Uh, um, yeah. We, yeah. We can, if, if we complete this one now, and, and then actually we can get going all together. So, so then um, we, we, we can, um, yeah, then, then you're all invited to, to uh, review on, on these um, pull requests. Mm -hmm. So if we complete this one here. Yeah. So I will, uh, I forgot to mention thank you by approving. So I just do that here. And yeah, we'll see if it is, uh, I'm merging this. You have, we have a couple of, uh, Two good recipes. We can work. Uh, we can have more. And if do you want yes. me to take a bit more? Of... Yeah, well, I I, um, I think we can now invite uh, also others to to make pull requests here. Yeah. So or if you all have uh, um, been added as a collaborator on on this repo, mm -hmm. you can uh, do the review and then you can. Uh, if you, if all looks good, if you're all happy, you, you can then merge the, the, yeah. the pull request. Yeah. So then we will go back to, uh, um, we have uh, finished uh, until step H. So we can, uh, we did the code review and merging. We showed that a uh, couple of, uh, two of the pull requests and we find it's good. So we merge it. Um, so then uh, we discussed a little bit about the merge request and pull request on GitLab, right? Um, it is the same, but there are different names on the GitLab. It is a merge request and GitHub it is pull request. Does it have any difference on the name? The functioning is the same, right? Uh, I haven't used GitLab for a long time, but I think essentially it, it, it's uh, a naming difference. Yeah. Only. So <clears throat> um, we have, now that we have been, been uh, merging a few pull requests, what mm -hmm. is then happening with the lo local repositories? Yeah, will, will, they, will then they automatically have this content? 
uh, no, we have to sync that uh, web in, uh, the repository is the remote repository to our uh, loc uh, local repository on my uh, laptop. So you see, I have um, in the T T. Uh, it is uh, which in my branch I have mm -hmm. that uh, T T uh, T recipe, but it is not at merged. Yeah, if you might get status. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Still in the notes and chat, people are asking what they should be doing, both for people that are in teams and following alone on the stream. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, the, 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 they are the. We, we can now work asynchronously and, and, and people are, are can then uh, get going with uh, reviewing each other's uh, pull requests yeah and and, and, and approve them yeah and the team uh, they can pull, uh, do this uh, themselves while we do this on on screen because uh yeah they can start merging there any question we have to take it uh, uh, yeah so the, to, to emphasize so, so that this this um, <clears throat> reviewing of pull requests can, can be done fully asynchronously and one can also then um, uh, so here i mean we had small contributions um, sometimes can be that uh, you will need to have a conversation before you are approving a pull request or that you would like to request and that some some additions are, are made yeah probably uh, you can have something on my uh, pull request and i can show it here mm -hmm. you want to add some sugar or yeah someone yeah. Uh, approved my t request yeah yeah Thank that's you. great yeah that's great yeah so um, i can uh, yeah then we can merge it yourself. i can merge it yes I would say thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So I'm I'm back to my local. Yes. So, so I I will switch to switch to main. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've got the tea? Yeah. So in the notes and there's... I will see the git status. Mm -hmm. So I'm still on git graph. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a little bit cut away there to the left in, in the Git graph in the terminal. You can move the window. Yeah, yeah that, that's better. Yes. Yeah. Um, but here locally, uh, your Daniel recipe, um, I mean, that was in a feature branch, but it has not yet been much back. But if you now type git pull. Yeah. Uh, what uh, I'm doing is I pull all the changes uh, on the main branch on the web yes, exactly. to my so, local copy. Because this time the merge was done on the repository on on GitHub. Mm -hmm. I mean, alternatively, we, we could have done the merge. In principle, we could have done the merge also um, locally. Uh, but now we did it on, yeah. on, on, on the, so in the main I... web. If I list, I could see that uh, two of the other recipes on my local computer. So, so now I think if you um, if you make make the window a bit, the terminal a bit taller, and then if you type git graph again, yeah. Oh yeah, this looks interesting. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah. 
because here we see all, all of the individual uh, pull request. Uh, yes, exactly, and that they have been merged in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at the very top here, we will see uh, this head pointer, head to main. You can see that everything is here um, merged together. So, so there, there are no, no loose threads here now after after having updated uh, with, with git pull yeah so this is up to date mm -hmm. uh, my local branch is up to date why do you think that i always um, whenever i try to something new i should uh, update it uh, here or okay if i if i keep the whole copy and uh, um, work on it with the new branch what is the flow in that yeah it's important because um, let's say that more than one person mm -hmm. is working on the same text file mm -hmm. uh, let's say making change to the t receipt uh, uh, then a uh, recipe mm -hmm. then um, could be that eventually you will have different content there which would be then in conflict with each okay. other yeah and then uh, if if i want to um, uh, let others know that i'm working on something what should I do here in the repository? Should I create a, a issue? Uh, yes, that, that's a good idea to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can create, uh, let's say someone wants to like uh, drink coffee. So you can say, um, uh, need to create coffee uh, yeah. recipe. So I uh, I can give um, some more uh, background information in the comment session if I want to. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, I will just uh, create an issue. Yeah. So I uh, type the issue uh, and submit new issue. And uh, you can list the issue here. Mm -hmm. And in this repository, we have an issue. And I I know that it, I mean there is a need to create a coffee, and I would like to work on it. So. Uh, and I want others to know that I will work on it. So they, we will go and I I will just say at this, um, I'm working on it. It's, I will assign to myself mm -hmm. uh, here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, 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 and this with the signing is, uh, uh, is a good feature because that can then um, um it's a good way to 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 um, to synchronize with, with your collaborators who mm -hmm. is doing what and if when uh, i can mention it and we will show it in the last session probably but if if i'm marking it and i pull the merge request and pull re uh, pull request and if i mention uh, this number the issue mm -hmm. number here and say closes uh, uh, hash 8 it automatically uh, close this issue when I am done with the merge request. But we will show it in the last session probably how it worked because we need to stop now here for the lunch. And if there is any quick question we can take, we can do that. Yes. Okay, perhaps we quickly review the hack MD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can just see what is the status of, of, of the pull requests. Yeah, so mostly all the pull requests, uh, see, you see that there are seven pull requests, they're mostly closed, most of them are merged. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, and uh, whenever you visit a uh, uh, repository, you could uh, check these uh, tabs. We'll come back. Uh, I think it's time for us to go for a lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to have a, a quick look here. Um, I'll do it on my screen uh, because I have the non recorded uh, um, uh, centralized workflow exercise repo. And mm -hmm. here, the colleagues have here in the background been processing here. So uh, currently we can see here that uh, out of 27 pull requests, uh, 18 of them have been reviewed and 
and, and merged. And then there yeah. are currently eight, uh, nine, which are open. Mm -hmm. So, um, and here you can all then, play, um, yeah, I mean, not, not, well, uh, as I spotted there in HackMD, for, for, at, at some point it was so that on, only Code Define Me staff uh, had the writing access here, but that was updated. So now uh, each and every one of you who are on this centralized workflow exercise, um, well, not recorded or on the recorded one, Mm -hmm. uh, can continue to review and then merge the pull requests. Okay, yeah. So shall we say bye now and have a good lunch and come back at uh, 12, we will do the forking exercise. Yes, that's uh, yes, also, so, so Richard in the control room, so to say, uh, is there some final point before going for lunch? Um, I don't think so. Okay. So yeah, we'll keep checking the talk and answering questions then. And see you in an hour. Yes, see you in an hour. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you've had a all lunch and that you're now refreshed for the next section of the lesson. So in the morning, we were looking on centralized workflows. And now after lunch, we will have a look on distributed version control and a forking workflow. So uh, we only touched upon distributed workflow a little bit. Um, so can highlight here from from this figure here, uh, you can see here, there's a red central repository here. Uh, in a technical point of view, there's nothing such as a really more central repository in, in Git. Um, the repositories are on equal par. However, uh, whenever you have a project, of course, one of, of the repositories will be the initial one, the, the first one. So let's say you can call this the, the, the parent repository. Uh, the parent repository could reside on a, um, I mean a server that you have, or it could be then on an infrastructure such as GitHub. So that's the, the red one. The forks are copies of the central repositories which uh, resides in their own namespace and to which then other um, groups of people can have also write access. So let's say that the red one here is a repository where let's say only persons who work at company A have write access and then you have some um, other organizations uh, with people who work at um, three different sites one here, one here, and one here. And they have then uh, one fork each of the, the parent repository, in which they then have uh, the read and write access. So members of, of the individual local teams can then clone, and they can clone either directly from the central repository that, that's something you can do then, for instance, in order to, uh, to download and keep up to date on official uh, new releases of, of a software. Or you can choose to work along this arrow in both directions, um, making then development on, let's say, feature branches of something. And, and please note here that on the red box here, the parental repository, central one, to the local clone here, you see it, it's one sided here, it's only one arrow in this direction. So in order to back propagate from here, we work from the local clone to our fork that we then have either only ourselves or, or shared with uh, a few um, colleagues. And from this fork here, we can work towards the central repository. So that's a little bit the, the logic with, with the setup.
so um, to emphasize a few things here, um, anybody who is um, um, to have forked off this, this project, they can propose contributions without asking for advanced permissions. This is then given that you have on GitHub enabled the issuing system. So it is only for public repository. Uh, yes. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, if the repository is, is not public, then it's not even visible at all. Um, and, and then it's a good question whether if the repository is public, whether the issues always are open or not. Uh, that could be either case. I, I don't know that specifically. So even though everyone can con propose contribution, the maintainer will have a full control over uh, maintainer can, can decide if it is good to be part of the repository, part of the work or not, right? Yes, and and uh, something that that happens uh, uh, in in projects that go, goes on over some time is that let's say you have a person here working mm. on on this fork here. Uh, if that person is working um, over longer time and 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 uh, uh, then build up a collaboration with let's say the the persons who, who originated the project, then it could very well be that you're then invited to, to work directly on the central repository. So overall, um, I mean, an infrastructure like GitHub allows for a very flexible uh, way of, of laying out your collaboration. So, so what's shown in this figure here is, is one example, but there are many variants to it. So what does, what does it mean contributors now have more than one remote? It is the central repository and the fourth one on their own namespace. Yeah, uh, that's right. And um, that's what we can see. So if you look on this local repo here, the local clone, we, we do have the, the two connections, um, one going up here to the central repo, uh, which then is uh, one-sided. So you, you can pull from here but you do not have right access to the central repo, so you cannot push any commits here. Neither to, or to, to the main branch, uh, uh, nor to the to, to feature branch, branches. On the other hand, you can then, from this local clone here, work towards the, the fork, on which you then have read and write access. So, um, um, the forking setup is something that, that then naturally um, comes into question when you have a, a code base or it could be other kind of content, it could be larger documents, for instance, for, for website content. When the whole <clears throat> When the whole community that is working around this content is growing large and, and belongs, belongs possibly then also to different organizations, uh, then it's natural that you are working with different um, forks of repositories, which each then reside in, 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 in its own namespace. And you can then have then a little bit uh, a fine grained control over who can um, have, have a right access to uh, different branches uh, at the different forks. So, um, as shown in, in this figure here, I mean, from this clone, we do have the connections to more than one place. In principle, it can, in this figure, it's, it's to uh, two other repositories, but in principle, it can be yet more. And uh, uh, this is something which is called then working with multiple remotes. And uh, one can work with this in, 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 uh, in Git by adding additional aliases. We're using then this syntax here, git remote add. You have an alias upstream and you point it then to an URL. 
Uh, you could also remove aliases. Uh, and if you are doing this with a repository, then uh, it, it's of course important that you can list what are the remotes that you have currently set up. And that is something that you can do with this command, git remote uh, dash dash verbose. So, um, so Daniel, what do you say? Should we get going with an exercise on forking? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, probably we can um, prepare about the exercise. Uh, first, go to the uh, teams and what should they are supposed to do. And then... Yeah, yes, exactly. So like in, in, in the earlier exercise, um, if you are working uh, within a team that can be then in, in one of the on-site rooms, or if you're in, in the in the team um, on a team over Zoom, then uh, you need to have signed one team lead who will be the maintainer. And this person will create an exercise repository from a template, and the template is the following template forking workflow exercise. And please note that unlike the centralized workflow, you are not supposed to add any collaborators to this repository. Yeah. So it is like uh, uh, the uh, the one who wants to uh, contribute to this uh, uh, repository, they fork it and make changes, then do the pull request, yeah, propose the changes to this uh, central uh, repository. That's what we are supposed to do, right? Yeah, so I mean, with, within the team, you will have them you have so to say that the first repository which is created from a template mm -hmm. by the maintainer and then the the team members are then forking off from this repository um, and uh, now we have the other scenario that's if you're following on your own and uh, then we who are instructors are the maintainers of the repository and we have uh, already forked from it from, from the template we have um, generated a parent repository and there's enough there's a question in chat should we merge during the exercise or only after um i think only after we can uh, discuss that when they when there is in the tier when we discuss the merge request or pull request um the team can merge it uh during the time so but until then uh, they need to go to step a and f and wait okay. watch their pull request there is Great. that a good idea i do have yeah, they, they can do that. that. But, 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 but if anyone would li like to step ahead and, and, and do a bit of merging, then, then that, that's also perfectly fine. But we will go through uh, jointly in the stream how to do the merge requests also. Okay, so recorded here. I come here and now um, if I need to enlarge my screen here and now the uh, sorry I'll... yes you, you can see it. you have the fork button here so I press the button here and now uh, it's displayed here owner that that's my namespace and repository name, uh, then it's suggesting that you keep the same repository name, but it will still be a unique repository as it is then under a different namespace. Copy the main branch only, sounds good. So then I create the fork. And uh, yeah, 
you can see here what this is about is the tartar recipes thingy and um, i want them to clone this to my own computer and i choose the ssh url copy it and go to my terminal it clone and the url So are we going to do a sh show this demo after they come back from uh, exercise or? Uh, yes, we'll walk it through. So I here just wanted to, to show the, the forking step. Yeah. And, and the clone step. So we are now. Yes, uh, we're back here. So this was the preparation step. So the. Um, I think you're showing the centralized workflow. Yes, right. That another tab there. Yes, sorry. Uh, good spotting. I'll... Yes. Okay. Um, so now back to the exercise. So here is where we will take off. The fork repository and create a pull recept. And we will work on a cookbook for taco recipes. That's the scenario. So, uh, as Daniel said already, the idea is that you work on steps A to F during the exercise time. And uh, then this will go on for half an hour. And uh, after that, when we recomp after that exercise time, then uh, we will actually have a break then for 10 minutes and then when we reconvene all together on stream we will go through it all together yeah the goal of this exercise is how to, uh, how to fork and modify the fork and the open a pull request on the central repository where you forked to your namespace yes so um we can put this link to the hack md it's already there it's already there. yeah great that's great uh, and then is there something before going to the area something we can bring up there at this point from the hack md I don't see any questions in indirect connection to, to, to this uh, exercise. So um, then I suggest that we get going. It's 17 past now, so we will get going till 47 past the hour. And uh, please note then that uh, right after this time, you will have a 10 minute break. So we'll be back then at 57 yeah. past the hour. We'll write okay. it also in the, in the document. Okay, so uh, please uh, continue to write in the HackMD and uh, see you then on stream in 40 minutes from now. Bye. Bye. Welcome back. We have seen a lot of uh, activity here in the uh, in the repositories for those of you who are following on stream. So that is really nice. So uh, we will, in a minute, we will uh, get going with merge requests. But uh, to recapitulate, uh, we will first here uh, show again how the, 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 the forking workflow is going. So I'll then, so we had an index exercise preparation. Uh, if you want to follow uh, the recorded one, you were to, to, to fork from this one. And uh, forking is done for pushing this button. And now I can illustrate uh, one thing here, namely, and, and that is that I had already done it because I did it before we were off to the exercise. And as you can see here, uh, 
it says here fork already exists here. Um, sorry. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we will walk through the steps here, ATF, here for everyone in stream, just to, to get everyone up to uh, up, up, up the same point, uh, in yeah. case some of you have not done all the steps. So, um, so Johan, uh, it is uh, in that uh, repository, I saw that fork eight, that means eight people fork that uh, repository. Uh, that's the, uh, yeah. Yes, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And and uh, many of, of the people who are forked have also been active in, in uh, contributing with issues and with pull requests. So now I go to um, to the clone I have here of, of my own fork. Working work work size recorded. And uh, the git status, I am on, on main here. And I'm not thinking, we have, have the Tucker receipt. So is there anything that we could add here? Do you have any, perhaps some dessert could be added? Yeah, that would be nice to have some dessert after taco. Yes. Probably so, ice cream. Yes. Um, no, sorry. Then we, So in, in, if I want to work on a uh, directory which I forked, uh, it would be nice to have a pull re uh, issue created that I want to uh, yes. have something on this. And... Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, then we have here the issue button here. Yeah. We have seven of them and we can create. Oh, okay. There's already an issue ice cream receipt needed. so. It takes up then something else. We take and create them. There's um, need uh, apple pie receipt. Yeah, hmm. and uh, there is comment. I was just thinking whether if if when we create some issue, we uh, yeah, please create it. there are comments. If if you want some feedback to uh, know how to make apple pie, you can. Uh, mention one of your colleague or someone uh, mm -hmm. here yeah. uh, in the comment session, probably uh, Johan or Tanya, could you? Uh... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Any suggestions? So we can take a conversation here. If, mm -hmm. um, so in, in that case, if you mention if I'm uh, participating, then I will get notified someone mentioned my name on this issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is like a direct notification to one specific user. So even if you have uh, in general unfollowed a, a mm -hmm. re repository, when here, when I pointed here to Dania's username, that means that th this notification will then possibly go through uh, over email in any case, depending on your settings. Um, so if you perhaps then leave a comment back. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. uh, I'm keen on using the receipt that I used uh, last month. <laughs> so I could then contribute something myself. Yeah. Um, so what I can do then if I am eager to do it is that I can assign myself. And uh, a little bit here about the, the, the culture about uh, collaborating here. Uh, my experience is, is that to assign yourself, that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, in case that uh, everyone is happy with you doing the job, perhaps could be that one of your colleagues would also be very eager to do the job. Uh, to assign other persons on, uh, if you're working here on a public repository on GitHub, uh, that is something that you need to be a little bit cautious with. 
So if it's one of your close co uh, colleagues and, and you're completely, you know, you're, you're in the middle of something and, and, and the plans are clear, then perhaps it's completely uh, uncontroversial just to assign it to, to one person. Uh, but if it's unclear, then I would say that it's, uh, uh, it's better that you first discuss it in some other channel rather than to do it here in, in, in the public conversation on GitHub. Yeah. Otherwise, you can put some, some like <laughs> unwanted pressure that the person needs to work on it, let's say, tomorrow. Yeah, but uh, uh, maybe you can ask for suggestions or feedbacks in the comment session rather than assigning. That would be a, especially when you work with a central uh, workflow. That that's a good idea. Mm. Uh, to the con, uh, you can ask suggestions from your colleagues. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah right, session. right, right, right. In the, in the comments, yeah, yes, yeah. that that that's that that's all fine. Um, yeah, that's my point was, was yeah. about this specific assigning yes. sanction yeah, yeah. That, that one should use it with a little bit of caution. But one should also not hesitate to use it because it's good to um, to book yourself or others on things so that you don't work two or three persons on the very same thing. Yeah. Assign to yourself and to let others know about that you are working on it. Yeah, precisely. Okay, so... Uh, then I go here and uh, I then create a new branch, add apple pie. And I'm using EM, that's for Emacs. Which happens to be my favorite editor. Oops. And keep it very simple. Pick apples make pie. That's all. Um, then is the question. So one can then we have here in the issue, this was created as issue number 17. Mm -hmm. We could choose here to write in the commit message uh, that the commit that I'm about to make now, that that is closing this issue. I so think I you, write... you forgot to stage it first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good spotting, yes. Uh, that I need to do. Um, so now we get status. Yeah, it's there. It states. Um, and uh, I will now, because I know that the issue number is 17. So I write here added Apple Pie receipt um, closes number 17. And then I push, and as I hadn't set the remote yet, we get this suggestion here that we specify upstream origin and add apple pie. So that one can then simply copy and paste, and everything is then done. Great, uh, we go here. And because so it was not, you're pushing it to the central repository, not the forked one, right? How this, but ah, okay, that that was okay. Uh, that was not the intention. Was it? But that's okay. You can uh, push it, and uh, yeah. it's. Yeah. Uh, this is close to 70. And what is happening now uh, when you merge? Uh, 
So I will try to merge it here. Yeah. So can you refresh it? Yeah. So I think your audio is yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then we could now start and have a look. Yeah, on yeah. It. and I would like to see what happened to the issue there. Mm -hmm. And there are two closed issues. Could you check if the closed mm -hmm. seven open and two closed issues? And when we merge it, this issue closed itself. We didn't mm -hmm. need to come back manually and close the issue because that's done. Yeah. It's closed refer uh, referring to the issue. When uh, Johan uh, typed that uh, in the commit, it, uh, when it is merged, that issue closed. Mm -hmm. We can try to. Uh, yes. So now um, we need here to. So we have some participants who are here um, working in teams uh, on site or in the Zoom room. And for those of you, uh, you can um, get going with. Let me bring back here the lesson material to re review. So we are then at. Uh, part two, code review and merging changes. So uh, um, those of you who are working then in, in the team, you, you can start to have a look on the pull requests who have been um, made towards your your fork. Uh, no, towards the central repository. Yeah, to, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, towards the central, yeah. Yes, but I mean towards their central repository. And uh, maybe we could, uh, you could. Uh... Yeah, now we can go back to look, have a look on, on what has been. <clears throat> the pull request. Yes, yeah, what's been contributed here to the, the forking workflow exercise recorded. Mm -hmm. yeah. Central repo. And um, yeah, first we can look on, on the issues. And we do have here currently seven open and two closed. And uh, if you look if a you, little bit. Yeah, if you open one of the issue. Uh, I can open, for instance, this Mayo proposal here. Yeah. About mayonnaise. And uh, oh, that's interesting. Here we can see here something has happened here. I mean, here was the original uh, issue, the proposal. Okay. Uh, to add a spoon of mayo and uh, here's commit which is adding uh, referring to this uh, and but this is this is not meant stated there as a pull request here but it's mentioned in the commits which then are going into what I think is a pull request. So if you go back here to the tab here, go to pull requests. Yeah, and here we have it. Yeah, you can either do on the commit or on the pull request, uh, this cross reference uh, with the issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Here we would like to review what has happened. So look at files changed. So here we have an addition here of. Up, up, up. Okay, it's not only about mayonnaise, but at the end there is two tablespoons of mayo. So that looks all good, I think. So then we review the changes. Yeah, and very importantly here now uh, is here, where does this pull request, how is this uh, directed? So it's, first of all, here's the username who would like to merge two commits. And he wants to merge into this 
to the main branch of the central repository and uh, the merge is to be done from add my proposal branch in the user's own namespace. So this is then the proper forking workflow because this this here is something um, a branch which is living in, in, in the fork. So we review the changes. We have approve with a commit comment sounds yummy and submit review. And uh, <clears throat> just point out one more thing here. Uh, here in this green button here, this branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Uh, that's uh, to indicate that there's no conflict of the contents in, in this uh, feature branch towards the main branch of, of the parent repository. So, so, so it's fine in that regard. In addition, and this we will something touch upon you next week, one can here within GitHub add workflows that will also have a look into the new content of, yeah, in this case here, the, the mayonnaise uh, version, uh, but more generally in, in computer code, and then run some tests on the new material so that you would have then the opportunity to, to let the machinery on GitHub make tests on the, the functioning of, of the new contribution. So that's a, separate, a topic for a separate lesson in, in uh, during next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for now, we are simply happy to merge the pull request, which we will do now. Yeah, so we will uh, do it in the background. Our uh, colleagues can help us to uh, merge it. In the meanwhile, could you uh, go back and uh, show us how to uh, sync with the latest version of the... Yes, yes. Uh, and do just first here indicate that now this has been merged. Then you see the number of issues, number of pull requests have been changed because they have been dropping with one each. Then go to my local clone here on the computer. Hit status. I switch to main. And git pull. Wait. Well, it's just strange. Okay, but now I'm in my own namespace. Good. That that means then that after all, I, I should uh, go to my fork on GitHub. So that is then what I will do. I go here and uh, go to my fork. And here you can see here, this branch is eight commits behind the main branch of the central repository. The push here, sync fork. update branch. And uh, yeah, here's indicated successfully fetched and fast forwarded from upstream, yeah, this upstream to then my fork. Yeah, so now I'm in my own namespace at this repository. And if you go back and uh, git pull origin on your uh, laptop, that will be updated. Yeah, now it will be more interesting. Yes, here you can see a lot of things that uh, has happened. So with git log, um, yeah, I had the mayonnaise thing uh, that I had merged, and then. Uh, a minute later, well, yeah, I did well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit later that, that Dania reviewed and merged. 
could also then have a look on git graph and uh, yeah as you can see here there are a number of contributions which have well branches that have, have forked uh, have, have run, 50 branches that have branched off and then have been brought back by merge to, to the main branch mm -hmm. so i think we are lagging behind but I think yeah we well I, I think yeah i think we've now covered uh, these steps uh, both the, the review and merge and also the now to update your fork mm -hmm. so uh, we could go to uh, you can share the screen and go to the next session mm -hmm. uh, contributing how to contribute changes to somebody yes, else yes yes mm -hmm. we can have a discussion and richard are you joining us yeah, I can. And is anyone else here in with the instructors who would like to join? Um, so how to contribute change to somebody else's project? Is there yeah. any, any kind of um, workflow someone follows? And hmm. How do you do that, Johan, at your institute? Yeah, I, I work almost solely with, with, with the central workflow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you clone the work uh, the repository and create a branch and submit a pull request with the change proposal. Yes, yes. And, and very often I actually, if I do work with, um, with this, so to say, um, if, I, if I make an addition with this sort of um, um, well, well, man, it's important to be pragmatic about all these matters. Uh, so so, so uh, not, not everything needs to be reviewed uh, by others at all time. Uh, but one can nevertheless to work in a feature branch, I would say, is always a good habit to do. And then you can then, uh, I then uh, often commit things and, and push it back to the main repo and make it a pull request. And if I see that this is just, let's say, a plain addition of something which I know is, well, reasonable content, then I might actually go ahead and merge it myself. So self-merging. However, uh, and I would like to emphasize this, uh, if you have something, let's say you're working with content for a web page, a web page which is reaching 10,000 viewers every day, if you push the main, perhaps then the HTML code is built and it's online within 10 seconds. If you then do a mistake, uh, that's something completely different. So uh, in such a scenario and many other scenarios, then the review and the marketing by a colleague is, is truly important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it could also then be clearly if you have code with is or, or scripts uh, with once they've been put to main, these are the scripts that will be uh, running operating some service. And and sometimes you cannot dry run the scripts, but the script if you change them, the next version of the script needs to be functional on 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 the first I mean mm -hmm. the first shot. Yeah. I think we covered about uh, the workflow of how to contribute, uh, creating an issue, and uh, if there is a need uh, to feedback, uh, comment on it and have a conversation there if you want to, it to be public uh, to everyone and assign to yourself or, uh, to let others know that if yeah. uh, we are working on, you are working on that specific issue. Mm. What is the prone of this kind of workflow, like pros or pros of uh, uh, these workflows? Do we get um, more suggestion? And to me, it is mostly mm -hmm. learning, learning from others. Yeah, like the way I look at it. So once I read this, oh, well, a while ago, that the novelty of GitHub. I GitHub developed with the distributed workflow 
is that it made it easier for people to contribute. So before to contribute, either you would have to request access, which would mean that it's, well, I mean, you'd have to already be very involved or you can like do something and send an email to someone and hope that they have enough time to read it and apply it. But now, so basically there's quite often I'm doing something and there's some other tool I'm using made by someone else and it's on GitHub. And I see, oh, there's a small issue in here. I would like to fix it. I might be like in the documentation. It might be, oh, I can add this feature or maybe fix something else about it. And I can go there and I can fork it and I can try to fix it. I can test it on my own side in my own fork of it, see if it works. And then after I'm sure I'll make the pull request. And then it's really easy. Like I don't need any advanced permission to do that at all. I just try it. And then the maintainers will get notified and can decide, is this a good idea or not? So sort of allows people to like take part in a much bigger community because you don't have to go giving these permissions all the time. And that's just really cool. Like it sort of changes everything about using stuff. I mean, there's maybe sometimes that I have something and I need a different version. Like I want, I need something just for my things. I'll make a fork, I'll fix it in my version, but I don't need to make the pull request if I think it's something that is only for me, for example. Or, you know, I do some, like we have some changes, we contribute some and so on. Have you done many things like this? Uh, I did uh, with this uh, kind of forking and not uh, co really contributing back uh, mm -hmm. because uh, something is customized for some of our infrastructure. So it's globally, it may not be working, but uh, I would uh, like to have that uh, uh, the steps they use for, for the central yeah. repository. So uh, yeah. that I would use. and. And I like to follow the research-oriented uh, uh, GitHub repositories mm -hmm. so that uh, I get to know what is going on, even though I don't really do any kind of research now. Yeah, yeah. Um. The, that I'm a little bit acquainted on uh, re regarding forking workflows. This is not so much myself, but, but some, but but uh, stories I've heard from the community is this that. Um, so, so, so forking, I mean, truly then enables this that you you mm -hmm. uh, get going, uh, perhaps let's say another team or, or, or yourself to, to continue to work on some program or, or some tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can do that in, in a pretty much independent way. And then as Richard, Richard just said, uh, then, then when you've tested things, when you're happy with features, then you can communicate it back uh, with a pull request and perhaps they will also then uh, had issues about it earlier to, to sort of like suggest features and so on. And and then I think that it's rather important is that um, you have this communication, let's say, with, with, with the, the original creators of a program mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as I had as a courtesy to, to give like credit to them that, okay, you have this really nice program you can do feature A and B, I'm thinking of feature C. Would you be interested in, in me like having a go in that direction? Mm -hmm. um, or, or are you perhaps already working on it yourself? And uh, <clears throat> I, I would say that it's probably better to ask a little, to have a little bit more communication there than, than the other way around. Mm, yeah. yeah, in that regard, it is also good to discuss early be before we go further. Yeah. To get uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you think is there any um, uh, any recommend for reviewing the pull request or um, like is it uh, only for the seniors or uh, anyone can review the pull request? Yeah, um, the, yeah, that's a good. Um... I'd say anyone. I mean, yeah. oftentimes when I'm working on something, I'll be the expert in it, but I want someone else to read it for the other set of eyes and to say like, for someone that's not me, does this make sense? Especially when like writing other documentation or stuff, I just want like the person that is the expert writes it, but then someone else who needs to know checks it. And that's really important anyway. 
I, I do agree with him that, that there should not be any hierarchy. But some specific things I would like to get back, uh, back some feedback from spe some specific person who works on that. So I mm -hmm. preferred uh, them. I mentioned them in the pull request to uh, review. Uh, can you screen share the notes? Yes, yes. We've got feedback in there. Yeah. Scroll down. And plenty of questions. So. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, please fill in the feedback for for yeah. for day three. Um, a few of you have started to do that, mm -hmm. and, and that's always very welcome if you do that. Um, <clears throat> Are there some, I, I went through during the exercise, I, I went through the whole Q&A um, to see if there are some particular questions and answers to highlight. So I have, I have uh, three, which I uh, you could perhaps uh, mention. Oh. Yeah. So then let's see if I can go back to them. So I'll then scroll up to the top. Mm -hmm. And need even to go to the overflow document because mm -hmm. two of them are from the earlier discussion this morning. So yeah. So how number 17, how can we create a template? Uh -huh. It's the same concept as a Git sub module. And uh, yeah, that's a good uh, question. And, and uh, uh, the thing is that it, it's uh, rather straightforward to create a template. So, so um, what you do is simply go to settings and you then change the repository from being a regular repository to a template. So this, this you can do them for any, any repository that you are the maintainer of, or, or perhaps you need to be also owner. Um, as a maintainer, uh, we have mentioned it before, uh, do we have to protect the main branch? And uh, this is, yeah, generally this is a good thing to do. But please note that if you also send, uh, have that you need code review uh, in order to, to be able to, to, to push the main branch, then I mean, th th then you are I mean fully going for that workflow. So that means that if you need to do something a little bit fast, you would sort of say then always be need two persons to work on it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's yet another thing that I would say is can sometimes in practice be a little bit. Let's say all your colleagues are busy the whole day. No one can review it. Then might okay, perhaps good then. Nevertheless, if you could merge it yourself. Yeah. Uh, coming back for the start test, I would like to follow the workflow. Maybe I'm still learning the Git, uh, so I would always want to uh, go with the general workflow of having a branch and then go further. Sure, 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 sure. That, 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 that's, uh, I mean, uh, very good general habit. Uh, um, the third and, and, and last um, point I had was number 40. Uh, where can I find the create issue button? Uh, and that's an interesting uh, question because uh, it's written uh, here in. So it might be when you make a fork of a repository, it disables issues in there by default with the idea you probably want to make the issues in the upstream repository. Yes. Um, but you can turn it on in your settings if you need to. So maybe check that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, uh, but it's an... Uh... Yeah. It's an interesting detail because it's clear here that um, it generally is beneficial if you can have the, the, this, the discussion in form of issues, if you have that a little bit 
yeah. centralized. Because otherwise, if that is scattered, it might simply be that you have many parallel discussions. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a question, how to contribute to, well, I guess that's what we've been discussing, but it's, again, as a comment. And can I say a little bit about that? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's say there is something you need to, you want to contribute to, and you wonder what do I do, and it's on GitHub or GitLab. So you might find in there, like in the README or in a separate file, some information about how to contribute. But if you don't find that, it's safe to assume that by default, unless it's said otherwise, that what we've learned here about forking and making a pull request or merge request is sort of the default. Like you don't have to learn something special for every project to contribute it. Now, a project that's big enough and has enough things going on, there might be things like, okay, make sure you run these tests or make sure you format the code this way, or this is the kind of things we want or don't want. But I mean, really the basics is what we see here. And when I go to anything and I don't see any other contributing information, I assume it's what's here. It's actually a sort of philosophical point. So there's like, there've been some projects I've gone to where the contributing information is so long. I'm like, okay, so this is too much. I'm not going to, but I never see a project where it doesn't say anything because I assume, okay, you're using all the standard procedures. So I just do what I know. And I mean, so in my experience with contributing to things, no one has ever said, no no one has ever gotten mad at me for making a pull request. Most people are relatively happy. I mean, sometimes there's things which are basically not maintained anymore and there's no answer, but you know, that's fine. So then if other people are using it, like there've been times I've gone and seen, okay, this is not maintained, there's open pull request, but this pull request or issue comment has the solution that I need for my stuff. So I take that and start using it myself. And that's still a victory for the pull request. And if someone really didn't want any contributions, they can always turn off pull request and turn off issues. And then it's sort of clear, don't do it, which is fine too. Maybe it's handled some other way or something. So I'd say, you know, go for it. Uh, one thing I would, uh, would be uh, very careful about uh, submitting a code derivative uh, derivated from uh, some other's work. Uh, so license matters. Probably mm -hmm. we will discuss this next week. Mm, more on yeah. it. Mm, and also receiving pull request. Uh, should be yeah. very careful with clarifying license and the copyright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of yeah. the project is in open uh, source nowadays. Mm -hmm. That is a very good point. That if you are the maintainer of Ariapu and, and you get pull requests, then uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's good to keep in mind uh, these aspects also. Yeah. What's the origin of, of the new content? Mm -hmm. hmm. So we are now at uh, 37 past the full hour. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can perhaps scroll down here towards uh, the bottom of the document, see if something. Like yeah, let's see. So feedback feedbacks. was actually pretty good, at yeah, least sure. for the people that have hung around. Um, okay, so we can send virtual tacos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good. Yeah, so real talkers are requested. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, good, good. So uh, uh, thank you for everyone who has been actively participating uh, in this lesson and, and uh, for all of the, yeah, all, all, all of the team uh, in, in the background, in, in the Zoom rooms and, and on HackMD. Yes, thank you for the participants, and I hope uh, some of them will come back to teach next time we have called refinery. Oh, yes, that might be the do. goal. And uh -huh. volunteer and help spread the word for next time and be the team lead or instructor mm -hmm. or helper. Should we, um, a preview of next week? So, there's 
three days. So we're not studying Git directly anymore, but we're studying things which are using Git. So basically you could look at week two as a practice of this week, but for real kind of projects and use cases. So we learn what's it, day one is reproducible research, which is basically how to organize projects and make them shareable. And then social coding, where we talk about these licenses and other contributing things a bit more, like people have been asking. Day two is documentation and Jupyter, which again, use Git with these things to make it even better and more shareable. And day three is testing, which takes the GitHub and Git stuff to the next level. And then modular code development, which is basically putting all this kind of stuff together in a way that sort of like, it shows how you can actually make it where it can be reusable and extendable and stuff like that. And that's sort of a real example going from the start to the end there. So yeah, um, you'll get an email about preparation for next week and all that. But basically, if you were able to do the exercises today, you're ready for them. Except that we do need the Conda environment installation, which we haven't used this week so far. So if you haven't done that, then check it out now. Okay, anything else? That's a very, very uh, good um, summary on, on what's uh, waiting for us uh, for, for next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, uh, thank you, Richard, and thank you, Johan. It was nice to go teach with you. Uh, no, thank you all for teaching. Okay. Thank you for all the others. Who uh, works behind the scenes? Thank yeah. you. Oh and yes, have a we've great had afternoon or a great time. Lots of writing in the notes there. Check it out if yeah. you haven't. Okay, see yeah. you later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you later. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.